Okay, so I have completed uh, the previous steps. They were very tedious steps, but they were necessary steps in order to have a proper uh, robot uh, simulation. And now in this step, we're going to move the actual robot, at least the first joint, okay? And um, well, before I forget to mention, uh, remember that the joints one, two, three, and four are joints corresponding to the servos, and servos by default, they will be in the position 90 degrees. And the current position you can see here corresponds actually to this uh, 90 degrees. So I have already set these 90 degrees here for joints one, two, three, and four. This is not necessary for the rest of the joints, but these have to be in the 90 degree position. So please don't forget to uh, set this uh, value before we you proceed. Okay, so now what I want you to create is the actual hierarchy of the robot that will actually allow us to move the robot properly. So we will start by uh, considering that the base dy dynamic object, or well, in this case is a static object, will be the base object of everything. And we just simply need to drag the non-pure shape base with all the elements. And uh, then we have to make child the joint one. Has to be child of base dynamic, okay? And joint one will be in charge of moving the dynamic link one or link one dynamic object here. So the it will be child of joint one, okay? And once we have uh, this here, uh, also every non-pure shape object will be child of the its corresponding dynamic object. So that object now, if we move joint one, then this shape will move. And we, you can see easily, uh, sorry. Yeah. If we move right now this to zero, this will rotate. If we move this to 90, this will rotate again to the uh, home position. Okay. So now what you have, or what I suggest you to do is to drag just simply all the um, elements, just temporary at least, but all the elements to inside the uh, link one dynamic object. So they are child of um, uh, this object here. I, I'll let you to do that. Okay. So whenever you move the joint one, all the robot will move at least. Okay. That's just simply to apparently be working, but it's, not, it's still there's a lot of steps to complete. Okay. So another thing to do is to create a script, a non-threaded script that will be associated to the um, robot base, which is base dynamic. There is. And the idea with this script is that we're going to generate or to create a um, user function interface in order to move uh, the servos manually uh, with a slider, okay? And I have prepared a code containing what we need at least for this step. Uh, basically, uh, what I'm doing is just simply getting the object handle joint one. This is uh, the variable joint one here, and I'm setting the position of the joint uh, to be at 90 degrees. This with, with this set joint target position. This instruction here requires the value in radians, so that's why I convert the, 90, the number 90 into radians using this structure here, okay? And also remember that because the, um, the joints are in uh, force, um, torque force mode and position control mode, then we can use this set joint target position in order to set the reference point, the set point of uh, where we want to move the servo. And that's a reference point, which means that internally there's a dynamics and with the PAD and everything that will move the actual servo to the current, uh, to the target position. Okay, so there will be a slight difference between the concept of servo position or joint position and joint reference. There's a different concept. Okay, then what we're doing is here is to create a user interface. Uh, basically, we have two, a couple of labels or three labels actually with the joint one. But the important thing is that we have a slider that it's 
the values, the extreme values of or the end values of the, the slider are minus, minus 90 de degrees and min, uh, 90 degrees. And every time we move or we change the position of the slider, we will call the on Q1 change function, which is that one here. And uh, by default, the, the slider position will be at zero, okay, which corresponds to the actual 90 degrees converted to radians and will be this variable Q1 ref will be updated whenever we change the slide position and in the end will vary between 0 because minus 90 plus 90 will be 0 to 180 degrees which is the range of the servo and then uh, once we change this every time in the syscall actuation function we will just simply update the target position for the joint one using the variable q1 ref okay so i copy this code here uh, into here uh, and then let's see how it works okay now it will partially work because i haven't put all the elements uh, inside the link dynamic element but you will see how it works ah that's it uh, it's just slightly slow but yeah uh, let me see that's probably because uh, let me see motor properties is not enabled that's it uh, let me make sure oh, it's not enabled there it is now will be much faster that's it that's the actual expected behavior. Yeah. Okay. So please uh, follow the instructions and put all the elements inside this uh, link one dynamic. Thank you.